What is happening, guys? Cowboy here, and welcome back to the epilogue. All seemed lost after Arthur's death. Roderick sacrificed himself so Hugo and Amicia could get to Vitalis, and their efforts paid off. All right, let's go. Have we got everything? Yes, that's all Lucas asked for. Is Mummy going to get better with this? She will be alright, Hugo. Mummy is tough, isn't she? Just like you. That's right. I can't wait for us to find a new castle. Well, <laughs> you've got the taste of a king now. We'll see what we can do. We have to leave the region first. So, were you able to go home? Yes. The nest is still there, but it's empty. <sighs> oh, Amicia, look! Uh, the rats are going you for good. try your hand Let's at shooting. Not me. My sister's really good. Right, Amicia? All right. Let's have a go. Good. Good. The rule is simple. You have six stones, six possible shots. Try and shoot as many targets as possible. Are you ready? Ready. Go on, Amicia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Easy mode! You know how to do it. You want an apple. And all due respect. <laughs> yes, Amicia, well done. The apple's for you, Hugo. You're my biggest supporter. Oh, thanks. I was hungry. As always. Hey, today we're celebrating the third day without rats. There's a little fair down the street. Go take a look. A fair? A real fair? I've never seen a fair before. Hmm. Hugo, Lucas is waiting for us. We should be getting back. But it's a fair. Come on. Hugo... <laughs> Right, but we can't stay long. All of his, uh, all the veins are gone. I guess he's, uh... Look. Oh, that's the young boy. Oh, no. No, no, well, you just can't come in. But why? Because you can. That's why. Hey, is there a problem? No, yeah. the problem is a kid and his sister are wanted around here. By important people. We, well, we, we just don't want any trouble here, you understand? I can see very well. Hugo, we have to go. I mean, we did kill the Grand Inquisitor. Come on. It's weird, though, that we're wanted now, because even the uh, the bishop said that they were going to excommunicate Vitalis. So. Hey, Hugo. What? The first one to arrive at the cart wins 20 apples. 20 apples? But you'll never beat me. Right, Slug? What? You see. Oh, yeah? Then on three. One. Two. Three. Hey. I mean, I guess even if he's excommunicated, murder is still I'm right murder. Behind you. you can't beat me. <laughs> all right, all right. You won. Yes, twenty apples. We made it, Lucas. Do you have everything? The Saint John's Wort, the Hawthorn, all of it. Let's go. Good. Amicia? Yes? Why are they looking at me like that? Melly looked at me the same way. Then she left. Because she doesn't like me anymore. Hugo, she... She had other things to do. That's not true. But it doesn't matter. Run! <laughs> Is she going to sleep much longer? She has to get her strength back. With the herbs you bought, she'll soon be back on her feet. All right. Hey, Hugo. What? Do you think I'm pretty? <laughs> You're ugly. Really ugly. <laughs> <gasps> ugly? Me? You look like a big fat fly. A fly? Your own sister? Oh, such a slur requires punishment. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they just go off and live somewhere else now.
Well, I guess that's it. I mean, see, this this is when I you'd think the credits would roll, not right after Vitalis. Seems like a very natural credits time. Big thank you to all Soba Studio and our family members for support. Nice. So let's talk about the game. Alright, we, we are seeing credits roll again, which is good. Um, I'm going to lower the volume a little bit here just so y'all can hear me properly. Um, let's see. Alright, lowered it just a little bit. So hopefully it's it's better. Actually, no, no, it still looks really high. Let me, let me put it even lower. Alright, that looks a little bit better. Oh, man. Let's talk about Plague Tale. So, all in all, I gotta say, uh, for for what we have experienced so far in, uh, in 2019, this is definitely definitely up near the, the top tier of things. Um, I mean, visually, the game was, was astounding. It had great voice acting to it. It had... Uh, you know, there there was a lot about this game that really knocked it out of the park. Like out of everything I've played this year, I mean, Sekiro is is a uh, you know, definitely at the top of my list. But I think I would put this right after it. And I think one of the things that this game did really well is even though it wasn't it wasn't super gameplay intensive, there wasn't a lot going on. It was very story driven. It was very you know uh, handholdy in a sense. You know, yet very forgiving tutorials, but this game told a story, and it told it well. Like, it told it really well. I mean, damn. So, uh, going into a focus review, obviously the graphics in this game were, were pretty outstanding. I would, I would put this ahead of, you know, Metro, which I think is probably one of the more visually impressive games so far in 2019. Like, even in the first episode, I was just like, wow, this game is beautiful looking. Um... The, the music was great. The voice acting was great. The, you know, all in all, the sound design for this game really just kind of knocked it out of the park. Um, as for the gameplay, the gameplay was all in all pretty fluid. I mean, it's, it's you know, it was so simple. I, I think it's, you have to keep that in mind. It's kind of hard to mess something up with as simple as this gameplay was. You know, it's either you, you throw the stone or you... Uh, you use the sling. So there's really not much to it, but because of that, I think it's even more important that it's executed well. Like, if it had been wonky when it came to throwing stones, that would have been a major, major downside. So while there wasn't too much to the gameplay, um, what there was, I do think, was fluid. Uh, the one exception of that was the dodge mechanic, which I thought was a little bit wonky every now and then, because you would hit space to climb up on stuff. And at the same time, space was like your dodge button which i never really ended up having to use i think i actually like used it maybe once or twice uh but i always found it a little goofy where you know i'd essentially uh i would go to like climb up on something for example and and instead of getting the prompt to climb i would dodge backwards so that was a little bit weird um and on that note i want to kind of go in and and discuss bugs if you will because there were a couple instances of bugs in the game um not many but so that that i wouldn't really call that a bug it's more of a uh you know just the, the game not recognizing what the the uh i guess superior command would have been you know i'm running up to something obviously i want to climb not dodge backwards um we had that one bug that was pretty early on where uh hugo got stuck in a box that was pretty funny but we were able to just you know reset and and fix that then and there, so that was nice. Um, so all in all, not too much on the bugs front. Um, I think there was something, oh god, what was it? I was thinking about it, because I was actually thinking about this review on my drive home from lunch. There was one thing that that was like sticking in my mind that right now I can't remember what the hell it was. Um, anyway, so moving on from there, uh, characters... I liked I like the character design. They definitely fell into some some pretty standard archetypes, but um, I think they did a really good job of portraying the big sister little brother dynamic here. Because 
You know, you love your siblings, but at times they, they're irritating and they're annoying. And I think they did a good job of exemplifying that. Um, you know, especially, you know, she, like, like yells at Hugo every now and then, and then Hugo obviously gets sad and, and kind of freaks out. And, and it's pretty consistent with what you would expect. So despite the fact that we're, we're in in a situation where, you know, our little brother is able to essentially control rats, like he's one of the freaking X-Men, I think we, we still saw... Um, Odex, family arms. Uh, we still saw a fair amount of realism in terms of portraying the family dynamic, which I thought was really nice. Um, some of the characters, a little, little bit sad to, to watch Roderick catch the arrows and die. You know, he was he was a cool lad. and The, the other guy, I'm trying to remember what her name was, Millie's brother. I don't remember. I don't remember his name. He wasn't with us like half the game, so his death, I was kind of like, ah, whatever. It happens. Um, but all in all, I think that the characters definitely had pretty distinct personalities and, and good good uh, interactions between them. Um, I mean, yeah. All in all, this was this was just a pretty. Given it, it was a very story-driven narrative experience, there wasn't a lot of like raw gameplay. This was definitely a solid game. Um, in terms of time, definitely kind of on the shorter side. I mean, we're looking at, at 20 episodes, so a total of about 10 hours. And I want to say... Let me see. I want to say the game was like... I'd say it's like 50 bucks or something. Yeah, it's 50 right now. So, in terms of price for value, I don't know if the price really justifies it. I could, I could see this game falling more in the range of... Uh, you know, like $30, because it is a, a great experience, it's a great narrative, but $50 for what's essentially a 10-hour game with probably not much replayability. I mean, in terms of replayability, I could, you know, I could go and try and collect all the extras, but, you know, aside from that and, and diving deep into the story, there's not going to be too much variation in the game itself. This is definitely a you play it to experience it, and then you're done with it, and you're probably not going to come back. So to that extent, I think fifty dollars is kind of asking a lot. I mean, if if you go by a, uh, you know, if you go by a, a time a time for money model per se, you know, you're looking at at fifty bucks for ten hours of entertainment, which you know really isn't that bad. I mean, you're essentially you're you're paying five bucks an hour, but the thing is, if you're looking at that, if you're looking at, if you take the same metric, you know, and you compare it across other games, you know, something like Red Dead 60, and you can easily get probably 100 hours in it if you really wanted to sink time in. So I think the game was definitely a little bit overpriced for what it offered, but I will say it's probably uh, the best narrative experience I've had so far in 2019. Um, some things I wish that were closed out on a little bit better, you know, we had the battle with Fatalis, but... It was never touched on what happened with, with Hugo. I mean, we saw Hugo, the veins are gone. Um, we know he, he crossed the threshold and people were saying that the rats were gone. So did the did the macula just recede into his blood? Is it not there anymore? You know, did he suppress it or, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's not really elaborated. And especially since the game had an epilogue, I feel like it would have been a, a proper time to explain some of that, you know? They could have very easily during that scene where we saw the carriage being pulled away, being like, you know, after the defeat of Vitalis, uh, Misia and her companions traveled out to blah, 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 to a region where uh, Hugo was unknown. Uh, their hopes to start a new life. Um, while still a carrier of the Macula, Hugo had passed the threshold and was now able to suppress the ability, and with that, the plague was over. Or some shit like that, you know? Because you see the veins gone, and that makes me think, okay, I guess the, the Macula isn't a factor anymore, but, you know, do people just fucking grow out of it? And maybe that's explained in the Codex if I dig through a bunch of items, but considering how much of a narrative experience this is, I wouldn't expect them to hide post-plot details in, you know, hidden items. I, I would expect it to be explained. So, a little bit, a little bit, um, I guess irritated by that. You know, I think that would have been something, something good to let the user know and, you know, kind of bring more closure to the story. It's like, all right, so Millie, Millie left, everyone else goes out on this journey, but, you know, kind of how I was saying a second ago, all right, they killed the guy, but Bishop said they were going to excommunicate him. They realized that 
what he was doing was heretical and he was, you know, essentially dabbling in, in things he shouldn't fucking dabble in, but all of a sudden they're all wanted because he's dead, even though people are aware that this dude was essentially raising a rat army and trying to become some kind of man king or whatever the case was, but now they're wanted for killing him. And meanwhile, what about, what about the macula? What about rat boy and his powers? So anyway, all in all, I think I would give the game a nine out of 10. I think it did a, a good job at what it was trying to do. It did a very good job for being a narrative story driven adventure. But there were a couple plot points that I want closed out, and I think at the price point, there could have been a little bit more. So, all in all, definitely a, uh, a nice change of pace, especially after Days Gone. And in terms of what we're doing next, I'm not sure. Uh, I know a lot of you are probably asking about Rage 2 and why I haven't uploaded that yet. I have been playing Rage 2 on stream, and what it basically came down to is I decided I'm just going to keep it as a stream series, because I... I took it and I uploaded it and didn't make it go live, you know, basically like took it and was getting it ready to process and just <laughs> just having a couple episodes of Rage sitting around and getting ready to go live. I had two of them get hit with copyright claims for music and I had two more of them get demonetized for the violence in the game. And honestly, I'm just, I'm not about that life. I remember back when, when, uh, everything was getting hit by demonetization basically if enough of that shit happens it like flags your entire fucking channel and i know people that still suffer from that uh you know rory Khan, for example the same guy that i traded code vein footage with pretty much everything he uploads gets hit with not appropriate for advertisers so because of that we're in a day and age where uploading anything with gratuitous amounts of violence on youtube even if it's a video game puts your entire channel at risk so Rage is, is more than likely just going to stay as a Twitch thing. Uh, in terms of what game I'll be tackling next on the channel, I'm not entirely sure, but I do have a couple of smaller titles I've been looking at, a couple things on the Switch, uh, a couple indie things here or there. Uh, one was... I find what it was called. There was this, this game I got on Steam. It was supposed to be a... Uh, where did you go? Where did you go? Sort things out by name here. So I tried it. I was planning on that being my this this new series, and it just ended up not being that good. But I know people were asking about it. Let's see if I can remember what the hell it was called. But basically, it was a a game kind of similar to uh, Death's Gambit or Castlevania. It was like that, and um, ultimately, it just ended up not being that good. It was like a side-scrolling platformer, but you couldn't actually platform. You couldn't jump. So after about an hour of trying to record it, I decided uh, this was not for me, and I wasn't going to, to do anything else with it. Can't even find the damn name in my uh, my list of games. Oh, where is it at? No, it's that. Dark Devotion. Yeah, it's essentially a. Um, I don't know. It's it's a platformer, but it didn't. Uh, didn't feel as fluid as I was hoping, so for those curious what happened to that, that's not going to be up either. But either way, I mean, there's always games to play, and if nothing else, I can always revisit some other series. I could do a, a custom run in, in Sekiro, do that prosthetic tools only run or something like that, so we'll figure it out. But either way, guys, thanks for coming by and joining me on this journey. Definitely one of the more enjoyable ones of the year so far. I'll catch you guys soon enough with a new series.